It's really amazing to be talking to you, Danny, today. Could you please introduce yourself and what do you do for business? Hi, uh, thank you very much for inviting me today. My name is Danny Byrne. I am an artist. I live in England, south of England, about an hour and a half away from London. I concentrate mainly on uh, portraits, figurative, uh, equestrian sort of work. I'm trying to do maybe a few portrait, uh, a few landscapes because they sell a bit better. Fantastic. Uh, what do you mean by an artist? How can you define that? Oh, blimey, that's a question of an and a half, isn't it? Um, I mean, how I became an artist, maybe, um, is, is a long story, but I'll try and keep it short, I suppose. I mean, I grew up in a very sort of strange environment, if you like. My dad was quite a hard man. He was a policeman in the RAF. He came from Manchester, which is quite a hard place in, uh, uh, in England, north of England. And he married uh, my mum, who was also in the RAF. And we travelled all over the world, uh, which was great, fantastic. We saw things we'd never even seen. But art was never anything in the family. Never heard of it, didn't know what it was all about. We had few pictures on the wall. In fact, few pictures. We had no pictures on the wall. So no inspiration at all. Nobody knew anything about art. But I was told at a very early age from peers and teachers and uh, people that I knew that I could draw. And when I got to about, we were living in Cyprus at the time, and I must have been uh, around about sort of 15, 14, 15, um, that I decided that I, I had to think of something to do. My brother then, who was a bit older than me, decided to leave and join the RAF. And that's one thing I didn't want to do. My sister also um, joined or married somebody who was in the RAF. Uh, every time I went to Korea's to have a chat with them, they said, join the RAF. And that's one thing I didn't want to be. And one thing I didn't want to be was an airframe fitter, which is what they wanted me to do. And even to this day, I don't know what an airframe fitter is. I wanted to be a drawer. Uh, I used to practice every day. I used to have this board. I used to stick it on a, um, I used to have this chair with arms and I used to draw away. And one day, as I'm always thinking, I've got it a year, maybe two years in Cyprus before I go back and then I'm going to start my career. I, I, it wasn't a case of me wanting to make money. It was a case I wanted to make a living. I wanted to get away from home, be dependent on myself so I could do what I, like, what I wanted to do. So I was thinking, what can I do? And I certainly didn't want to join, join the RF. So I thought, I want to be a drawer, whatever that was. Uh, my dad came in one day and he he'd, uh, had a couple of drinks. He sat down, fell asleep and I was drawing and I thought, I'll draw him. So I drew a picture of him thinking, oh, maybe I could make a living drawing people. Unfortunately, it didn't go quite, quite as planned. When he woke up, I showed him the picture. He didn't say much. He just crumpled the paper and walked out of the room. And I thought, thinking back, I thought I should have been a bit sad about that. But I wasn't. I just thought, damn, that avenue is now gone. What else can I do? And I think it was a few days, maybe a week later, I was in uh, school and I, I did a funny drawing, which I, I didn't know anything about caricatures then, of the school teacher who Mr. Swan, his name was. I drew him, I showed it to my friend, he laughed out loud. The teacher came over, took the paper, saw it, gave the paper back to me and said, can you go to the headmaster? And I, as I was walking to the headmaster thinking I'm in trouble here, that's another avenue gone. Now what am I gonna do? But when I got to the headmaster, he said, oh, that's great. What I want you to do is can you do the same sort of funny drawing of each of the head uh, of departments? I think it was about eight of them. And I thought, well, that's good. I've got a little job out of this. So do it in your own in, in school time. I did it, went back to the classroom. At the end of the class, the Mr. Swan, the teacher I did a funny drawing, called me over and he, and he said, any chance I could buy that drawing from you? And he gave me what I think was equivalent to about a fiver now. So I thought, yes, I can probably make some money out of this. Uh, so I went home and I carried on doing caricatures, but it was hard to sell caricatures. You could, if you did a caricature of somebody, the only people that would buy it is themselves and maybe their family, but it was difficult. So then I came up with the idea of maybe doing a little cartoon drawing and putting a little caption on the bottom and seeing if I can make a living out of that. So I did that and I sent it a couple off, all to do with the RF, because that's where I was, it was an RAF paper. I sent two cartoons off. I got an envelope back with one of them back and a check for some money because they'd accepted one. 
And I thought, great, I'll send some more. And every week they accepted some. And, and then on one week they actually printed a little article of mine of six cartoons. And I thought, that's brilliant. This is what I want to do. We left England as soon as I got home, uh, back into the UK. I made a concerted effort sitting down every day, drawing lots and lots of different cartoons and sending them to different newspapers. Uh, in England, you know, the News of the World, when it was around, the Mirror, Sun, you name it, magazines. Um, I was sending off, sometimes I was rejected, some, but it just wasn't enough to make the money I wanted. So the help of my sister, who helped me do a CV, I went into uh, uh, the local town, Nottingham, and I got a job in advertising. So I worked there in advertising, and I got the job purely by the cartoons, because I didn't have anything else. So I thought, well, that's good. So, uh, so in the evenings and weekends, I carried on with the, the cartoons and it wasn't long where I was doing okay, but I needed an agent. So I got myself an agent um, and he was helping me. So I'd send the, the originals to him and then he would sort them out, where they go, who does what, whatever, and he'll take a cut of 15%. And it got so good that I packed up the advertising, the, the advertising job uh, and then carried on doing more color work. So then I started doing, things like greeting cards. And I had a, a few accepted by, this is going back a while now, by Princess Anne's charity. So I did a, a few of them, which did quite well. And then I ended up doing greeting, car, uh, greeting cards for other companies. I did a range of loads of different jigsaw puzzles for Waddington's and people like that. So I went on, I did a range of uh, uh, limited edition prints and illustrations of cartoons. I did a series of about uh, six different books which were published in all sorts of different languages, some languages that start from the back and work forward. It was, you know, all good fun. Royalties were coming in, everything was fine. But all the time, the cartoon work was being cut bit by bit by bit. The, the newspapers were doing, say, seven cartoons every day, and they did five, then they did three, then they did none. And I thought, now what am I going to do? And it just so happens at the same time, my agent got me a job working for a, uh, the Mirror Group on a Sunday newspaper, doing the political cartoon. Good money, thought great, I had to go uh, into London every Friday to draw the cartoon. Uh, it was quite good money, not enough, but good money every, every year. And I did that for six years or, or something, something like that. That was all going well until one day the new editor arrived and brought her own cartoon list in. Uh, so I was, I was out. So that was gone, and I thought, that's a bit of a shame. So what do I do now? And my same agent phoned me up and said, can you do on-the-spot caricatures? And this is a bit cartoon, we'll get to the art bit in a minute. Can you do on-the-spot caricatures? And, and, I th and I thought about it, and I said, I'll phone you back. And I thought, I can't do that. I can't sit in front of somebody and draw a, a cartoon. Good grief, this is, this is silly. This is, going to, uh, this is the early part of the 80s. Uh, so I thought he was quite a hard chap, this, this agent of mine. So I've really got to be stern, you know, and tell him, no, I'm sorry, I, this is a job I don't want to do. Yeah. Unfortunately, it didn't quite go the way it planned because when I phoned him back up, ready to, to be stern, I just said to him about this caricature. And he said, it's about uh, 1500 a week. So I said, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I must admit, doing the first few was really, really worrying. Uh, I must admit, I'd never done it before. So before I did it, I, I did a bit of work looking around, trying to draw my friends, my family, anybody I could drew, draw. And then on the first day, I was not good. I was, you know, I was feeling really sick and whatever. But after the, you know, my hand was shaking and, and whatever. But after about drawing the first five or six people, I thought, this is the life. I was only, only there from 10 till four, five days, 1,500 quid, thank you very much. Um, but after that went, I ended up working on Bournemouth Pier. I got a job on Bournemouth Pier, sitting doing the tourist 10, uh, 10 weeks of the year. Great money, fantastic, hard work. You're there at 10 o'clock in the morning. You'd be lucky to get home 11, 12 o'clock at night. But it was only the 10 weeks. What do I do the rest of the 10 weeks? Now my wife said, why don't you start painting? So I thought, give it a go. I love drawing faces, it's obviously with caricature. So it can't be that difficult, moving from a caricature to a painting. Boy, was I wrong. It was probably the, one of the most difficult things I think I've ever done. Uh, but I carried on with it, and now I can say I am an artist. 
and that's how I started being an artist. Fantastic. So let me ask you that: How difficult was this, the decision that you have a separate job from the family? It wasn't. It, um, it wasn't a difficult decision because there wasn't really a lot of things to decide on. I, I, I think, how am I going to make money out of this? And this is the days before, you know, we had social media. There was no Facebook, and there was no was it TikTok or Instagram or whatever. You know, you, you really basically had to paint a picture and try and sell it, uh, try and get it in the galleries if you can, very difficult. There were societies you could join, uh, but you have to become a member. To become a member, then it becomes like a, a competition that you, you know, that uh, you have to uh, sort of join, not join, but you um, send your work in with a fee in the hope that you get in. But if you don't get in, you've had it. And I do get a, or I've had a lot of young people that have sort of come to me over the years and say, oh, this, this all competition, this, this art that's all competition is not good. I paid the 30 pounds, I never get in. All I feel like is I'm paying for the society, which in a way you are. But if you did get in, then it opens doors. You, you're, you're able to meet other artists that have got their work in. Um, you can, you know, this networking thing, which is all that we had, it was going around shaking people's hands, say, trying to leave some sort of an image of yourself on them in the hope that next time you put the work in, you will, you will get it in. And the more work that you got in, the more times that people saw your work or liked your work, um, they would then uh, s sort of, not, not a following like you get on Facebook, but there'd be a following in, in terms of that uh, they'd be on my mailing list. So if I did have an exhibition somewhere, these are the people I would contact first before you put an ad in the paper or in a, a local art magazine or something. But as I said, it was a lot harder then, I think, than it is now. I'm not saying it's easy now. I think uh, anybody who's anybody thinks that they probably can be an artist, so they have a go. So it's still difficult today because there's so many people doing the same thing to get what they want from it, if you understand that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah. Yeah, no, second, you're going to say. Yeah, great. So, how satisfied um, is your family about you until now? <laughs> Right, how satisfied? I think they're very satisfied. It's good to have a family, if you like, that supports you. And my mum and dad never did. They didn't understand it. They didn't have anything to do with art. It's this thing with you've got to get a proper job and do this as a hobby, whatever. You need to do something, get yourself a, a pension for when you get older. And I think the best thing for you is to join your head. And my sister was there. She was saying, if you don't want to do it, Danny, I'll help you anything you want me to do. You know, I'll do your CV for you. I'll, I couldn't drive then. I'll drive you to where you want to go to get you a job, etc." Um, I married well, my wife's a, uh, an academic, which is also very handy, so she's good at words, and she's always pushed me, she always wanted me to, to get away from the cartoons and to take things a little bit more seriously, and uh, I've got a younger brother who at the, the time when my other brother left the RF, whatever, was, he's 10 years younger than me, was a little bit out of it, but he's really helped me over the last sort of few years as well, or 10 years or so. So everybody's in, in it with me, sort of saying, what are you doing? How are you doing it? Can I help? What can I do to help? Uh, my wife is, my brother is, and everybody is. And they're all happy and, and whatever. And if I'm not painting, they, they actually want to know why. So oh, I yeah. paint every day, apart from one day. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So could you explain a little more about the challenges you've faced until now? Um, <clears throat> I think the challenges have always been, always will be, is getting you work out there getting it seen um as i said it's maybe a lot e easier now than it was you you've got um you know you've got websites i mean the first thing you do get a website uh and then what do you do with the website you've got to you've got to sort of manage it maintain it and market it you can't just have a website and nobody visit it how do you do that i don't know uh so you you, you sort of nowadays you can just go um online you put how to manage your website and there's scores of stuff you know there's 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 so, there's probably more mentors than there are mentees at the moment but there's always these people trying to get you on their side i, I don't know if they take money because i've never done that but they're always telling you you come with us and we'll sort your website we'll get you up on the top of the list or whatever this theme is um but if you've got a website uh then you can direct people to it and then if you've got things like uh, Instagram, you know, every time you put a painting with Instagram, 
I try to, sometimes I forget, you put your website on it so that people, if they like the work, they can follow the website. There's TikTok, don't know anything about TikTok at all. It's just that I was looking uh, the other day and, and something came up on Facebook where this man, I think it was about, he was, he was on TikTok and he was watering a plant and he was filming it. And, he, and all he was was watering it. And then the next day he was saying, I'm watering it again. Can you see the buds opening? And he had a couple of hundred people watching him. By the end of the week, he, by, the, by the end of it, when all the, the flower was blooming, he had 10,000 viewers watching this flower opening. And I thought, well, there's something there in TikTok where you could probably do a, you know, a blank canvas. Say, this is a blank canvas. I'm going to make it into a, a masterpiece. And then the following day, you show a few marks. I haven't done this yet. Show a few marks. The next day, a few more. And hopefully, maybe people every day will see it, watch it, wait for it. Uh, put it. I don't know if you can put remarks on it like you can with um, Instagram. I'm not too sure. And at the end of it, I've got it. I've, you know, you can get people also, again, with... Um, uh, Instagram, you can say, what do you think of the painting? Is there anything you think I should do with it? So you can get them integrated into the painting as well. So there, there's, and then at the end, there's the painting. And if you want a limited edition print, it's 45 pounds. And with a bit of luck, you might get some work out of it that way. So, so sort of generally pushing these sort of things, which I don't do as much as I should do, and I want to do it. It's easy to sort of uh, give advice, but it's sometimes it's quite difficult to do it yourself. Um, because I've, I've always had the, the, especially uh, like advising people and what you know because I get a lot of people coming to me saying well how do you do it how do you become a painter I've seen your work I love it you've got thousands of followers on this and you've got that and you've got that and whatever you know uh, and, I, and I always try and say to the to, to people when they first start there are sort of three if you like basic rules uh, and one of them is good art you've got to produce good art but that's not I don't think the first I think the first thing, if, if you're a wrong, young person and you want to get in the art, art field, is to have a look at exactly what sort of art you want to do for a start. You know, there's, um, you, know, you want to be a painter, you want to be do just, um, a sculpture, or uh, you want to do videos, or whatever. If you're going to be a painter, what sort of materials are you going to work with? What do you want to work with? Acrylics, or oils, or, 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 or crayons, pencils, you name it. Um, so I thought the first thing is try and be distinctive, I think. Not only distinctive in the, even though you haven't got any art yet, distinctive in the way that you produce it and distinctive in the way that you're going to show it. And I mean, how you're going to show it in a way that is linked to some sort of, so, so if anybody sees it, it they know it's you. Whether you do it, maybe paint a painting, and then it's got a tartan background if you're Scottish. So when people see it, they see the tartan background, and they can link the painting in with the tartan background so they know that it's you. And also being distinctive also means in the way that you sell it as well. Um, you know, it's got to be professional, and it's got to look good, and the way you come across to people, you, you know, it's no good, you know, uh, uh, if you're in a... Um, I don't know, if you're out or something and people say oh what do you do and you say well, well yeah, I'm an artist I've painted a couple of paintings and nobody's bought anything for ages and I don't quite know what, if I could sell what no you know people are going to get bored with that and they're certainly not going to give you some money so be distinctive and, and, and be intelligent about your work you've got to be productive about it you've got to be showing it that you love the work that you do and then you, then, then, then when nowadays you can say to people not only will I tell you about it there's my phone, I will show you it. And there it is with the tartan background. So your work is there or whatever. So you can show it off in a distinctive way. And then you say, I'll tell you what I do, give me your phone number and I will send you my link to my website. When you've got the phone number, you've also got somebody on your list to send to when you have an exhibition. Now the second thing, before you've even started work, I think, is, um, so, um, Danny, please. Promotion. Yeah. How are you gonna? How are you gonna? I need a how question here. Share? Danny, I need a yeah, question sorry. here. So, you, you mentioned the three principles or three basics for art. Yeah. Good art, uh, being distinctive. What is number three? No, number three is the good art. The second one is how you're gonna, once you've got your art, how are you gonna display it? Website, as I said before, Instagram, 
tic-tac, showing people your work, being positive about your work, maybe seeing gal galleries. Um, also, when I say seeing galleries, I'm not saying you take your work in there because you haven't done any. Having to look and say, well, this gallery has got the sort of work that I want to do. Now, it's hard nowadays, is it? not hard, it's impossible to be original. Everything's been done, everything's cliched. You know, as soon as the, the caveman did a, a picture of a man on the wall, every man afterwards is a copy from that man that was first drawn on the wall. So, so you've got to look at something a bit like, uh, I think, I don't know if it's Picasso said it or he picked it up from somewhere, that good artists copy, but great artists steal. Which actually means that you see something, there's no good copying it. You don't want to copy something that looks like um, Stanley Spencer, because all you'd be doing is helping Stanley Spencer sell his work. So you take his work and the good parts of it, look at it and see how you can adapt that into your own style, if, if you can do that. And then by doing that, you actually become unique in your own way, but, but more distinctive uh, by stealing. So that's a, a, a sort of a good way of, um, of, of getting something going. And then the last thing is good art. Now, what is good art? Uh, which is also difficult to say. You, you, you've got sort of, for painting, because I'm a painter, there's two types, I would have thought. There's perfection, which people sit down and they can, uh, uh, you know, Leonardo da Vinci did it with the Mona Lisa. It took him 14 years and he still hadn't finished it. Um, uh, uh, there's a lot, you know, Rembrandt, what it took you know, months and months and months, maybe years to do, do a painting. You know, uh, Franz Howells also took quite a while and uh, whatever. Um, so, or you'd be somebody like Picasso who said quantity, not quality. And, and that's why he did so many different artworks in such an array of different styles. So then you've got to decide which one you want to do. I'm not saying one is better. You might get more money by doing something with more perf uh, perfection. Um, but I find myself, if somebody was to come to me, I would say go for a bit of quantity to begin with. Uh, but you, but when you first start, you don't need a body of work. You know, uh, when I was young, people said, oh, you need six, ten paintings. You can't do anything about ten paintings. And I, and I always thought, why? Why, 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 why is that? But because you need to show the whole thing. But I said, no, you don't. Just do one piece of work, one piece of work. Then get it out there, show people it. Try and get somebody, it's very difficult to get somebody to critique a work, especially if they know you. They're always going to say it's very nice, you know, it's lovely, nice job, you know. But if you can get go into a gallery and show, I've done one piece of work, I'm thinking about doing it, well, what do you think? And never be put off, no matter what they say. Don't go away hopping and saying, oh, he doesn't understand me, whatever. Take it on board, what he says, what they say, and then go away. And the same when, if you're going to enter your work into one of these competitions, uh, which a lot of people, as I said before, are not happy with that. If you want to enter, enter, have a look at the work that's in the competition first. If it's something like um, Royal Portrait Society, have a look on their website, see what sort of work uh, gets um, accepted, and then see if your work is good enough. If it's, if it's not, you don't stand a chance. It's got to fit in, it's got to be a level of standard. Otherwise it won't work. There are other societies that will take lesser standard of work, uh, which is still good, don't get me wrong, it's still good, but it's a, in a different format, which is more, say, abstract or more um, um, impressionist. Have a look. You think, well, that suits me better. I'll have a go at putting my work into that gallery. And even before you put your work into that, if you've got a chance to have a look at the gallery the year before you put in, even better. So you can go and have a look at the members that have got their work in. If you can get there on the private view day, you can also chat to some of the artists and all artists will stop and talk to you. They will, you know, none of them are, you know, stiff necked or anything. They will stop, they'll talk to you, they'll give you advice and have a look at the framing, framing, take your camera, say this looks good because they all have a sort of a, a way that they're all framed. And, you, and even though you want to be different, you've still got to fit in somewhere. So take your camera, take some photographs of some work that you think that you like, uh, the way that it's framed, then go away, concentrate on what you're going to do, do it, frame it, enter it. Hopefully you get in. So it is a good way of getting your work, um, uh, um, uh, your, your work shown, 
And then with Instagram and, and all the other things, you, you're getting a more of a outlay of a lot more people to see it. Now I just did a, um, I don't know if you've heard of it, Sky Portrait Artist of the Year, have you heard of that? Yourself? Well, there's this thing here, it's quite big in, in this country, and big in America, and I think they show it all over the place. Uh, Sky, they do a, a portrait um, competition. It's another competition. Ah, you don't pay any money for it, but they ask you to send in a self-portrait. If you send in a self-portrait, if they like it, they phone you up, uh, and they, they, there's something like two or 3,000 people that send their portraits in, and only, I think there's 59, 56 people, 46, somewhere around there, get accepted. And uh, so I painted this portrait in, I sent it in, and I got this phone call saying, oh, we love your work, we want you to come in, blah, 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 please come in, this is the day. And, and the whole idea is to, that you go to uh, an art centre in London, Battersea, you sit down, you have four hours, and you, they give you a celebrity, and you paint them. There's three people painting one celebrity, three celebrities, nine people. And then you have a chance, then if you get through, to go to the next round. Uh, but anyway, I, I got the call, can you go in on a certain day? And the first thing I thought of was, oh dear, I can't paint a portrait in four hours. It's gonna take me a lot longer. So instead of just saying, that's it, I can't do it. He said, right, I can do this. I'm gonna be positive. I'm gonna do something distinctive. I'm gonna do something that is um, in the game as it were. And I'm gonna make sure I do something in the four hours. So my criteria for the day was, to finish the painting and to get a good likeness. So that's, so before I went in every day, sometimes twice a day, I would give myself four hours and I would do it, you know, sometimes they were big, too big. I can't finish it, it's too big, come down. Too small, make it a bit bigger, too much detail. If they've got a lot of hair, maybe I could crop it off, you know, at the top of their forehead. Let's get it done in the four hours. So I practice and practice and practice on, on doing that. And then on the day I, I went along with me, bit of board and paint and, and whatever. And, uh, I, I, and they, they, I can't, unfortunately, I can't tell you who I painted because I'm not allowed to, because it's, it's not on until I think on the TV September or sometime in September, October. So you can, you can have a look. And then they do interviews with you and whatever. And, and they, they, one of the interviews, they, they came over and they said, the three judges, which judge do you want to impress? And I said, none of them, which probably wasn't a good idea. I said, well, the first thing I wanted to do was to get the painting. I wanted to impress myself by finishing the painting. If I can finish the painting, that's one thing. Now, if I can finish the painting and I get a good likeness, that's the second thing. And there's only one thing left, that when I turn my painting around to my sitter and that sitter says, yes, I like that, it doesn't really matter what the judges say, I'm happy as punch. And on the day, even though I didn't get through, which I'm quite sad, the sitter chose my work. So I'm a winner, I can't fail. So I left there feeling really happy, but I put the work in to do it. So if anybody is thinking about entering competitions, put the work in, put the work in, do, do the homework, have a look see what you can do, see what you can do in the four hours, especially unless of course you already know you can do it in four hours, that's fine, but I didn't. So I was quite yeah. pleased with it. Awesome, so the question is, let's say for example, uh, this is a good portrait, this is the good painting. What are the criteria of a good painting? Wow, yeah, wow, <laughs> good questions again. Well, a good painting is, well, for a portrait, you've got to get a likeness. Um, I mean, Michelangelo used to say when he was painting the Sistine Chapel, he said it doesn't matter about a likeness really, because in 70 years time, nobody is going to know what this person looks like, which has got a bit of truth in it. Um, uh, I think a good portrait will be to a degree if you and your sitter are happy with it. Now, there's a lot of compromise going on there. There really is, because I want to paint people as they are. And I know that if you paint people as they are, they're not going to like it. A uh, singer sergeant said, uh, paint a friend, create an enemy. There's a lot of truth in that. Because people will say, oh, you've done my nose too big, you've done my eyes too big, my jowls are too big, whatever. So you've got to, all the time, you've got to twist and push and turn to try and 
But even with that, to me, that's still not enough. If you get a, I want something a little bit more than just a portrait of that person. I want to put a little bit of, you know, uh, people say when you've done, you know, like a caricature or another band, they say, oh, you've got his character. You can't paint character. No, you say you can't. You don't know what that person is like. You could be painting, you know, a villain, a mass murderer, a serial, you don't know. You don't know what they're like. You can only paint the image that, that is given you. But how do you can make it personalized a little bit is when you're painting, we still ask them things. You're talking, uh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a painter. Oh, I'll tell you what I can do. Maybe I can put a bit of painting stuff in the painting. So you can uh, uh, tailor it to that particular person. Uh, so not only have you, you've got a painting, you've got, I mean, I, I like the, the idea, I've always liked the idea of like, um, when you see um, the news, you're watching the news on the TV and you've got the person who's presenting the news. That is the figure that you're painting. But then also on the right hand side, on a screen, you've got somebody else that they're talking to. So you've got two figures in there. Maybe you can do something else. It doesn't have to be the figure or that. You can do something else in there. You've also got probably symbols in the top left hand corner. And then at the bottom, you've got this line that goes underneath it and it's telling you what the weather's like or, uh, you know, how uh, you know, the government's doing and that. So it's all these things, all these different things happening in the, in, on the TV. And I like to try, if I can, to get that into a painting. So not only have you got maybe the person, uh, maybe you can put in the background a slight caricature of that person. Maybe you could put uh, a logo of where they work, how they work. Uh, maybe you could put an image of a painting of their husband or, or, or wife or whatever in the corner. Uh, they may have a little slogan where they, they, they come out with a few words all the time, you know, like, ooh, and you can write that in. So the whole painting then is tailor-made. And if you, I think if you can do that, it gives it a little bit more I think, than just um, the portrait itself. And the, then I think that if the nose is a little bit too big, they miss it. So I'm in. <laughs> okay, so let, let's get back to your career. Like, how did you get promoted? Well, promotion, still working, still working on it. And I think you, I'll work on it every, all the time. It's art, unfortunately, is a business. All I've ever wanted to do is sit down and paint. That's it. But the rest of it, I don't, I'm not bothered. You know, people have said to me, if you do good art, people will come to your door. No, they won't. You've got to do. So I, I usually paint six days a week. And I get into trouble sometimes because I also sometimes nip in on Christmas, or holidays, nip in, do an hour, something like that. Uh, I always try and paint. And I will always say to young people, whenever they do something, every single day bar one do it whether whether you have to work on a dining room table you've got to work in your bedroom uh wherever just stop because but you know if you're working in your bedroom by the time you've got your board out your pencil sharpened by the time you've done all that and you start drawing you'll find that four or five hours are gone and you think blimey i've done this it was great i didn't even want to paint i didn't want to draw today so get into the habit of painting every single day bar one that bar one day is what you're talking about is promoting, is the pushing, is the how you how you can it's a bit difficult, difficult, more difficult at the moment with the coronavirus and everything, but how you can push your art with to other people, how you can get new things onto the market. And and it's no good sitting down and saying to yourself, what, what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna do a painting that sells. Now nah, that doesn't work. Because we don't know. We don't know. So you paint whatever you're painting to the best of your ability, and then when you Got that painting, if you, you think it needs a pair or something else to go with it, do that. And then push it out the same way uh, as I was saying with everybody else. Send it to galleries. Um, so again, do your homework, look at the galleries before you send it. Because if, if all they do is abstract and you're doing an installation, they're not going to take it. So have a look around, see what does what. You know, if you're more contemporary, look for the contemporary art galleries. Try and find a place to fit in. And then when you have fitted in, then you say, right. I've done that, now I'm going to try and fit in there. So I want to be an impressionist now, so I'm going to have a little go doing a, something different. This is what Picasso did all the time. He did something different, and he came up with something new all the time. And then if you're really, really clever, you'll come up with another ism. 
you know, like um, you know, uh, Cubism or Impressionism or whatever. Uh, but I don't know anybody that's come up with an ism in my lifetime yet. <laughs> okay. So my, my question here is like, you push yourself too much in my opinion. I think it's good. But how can you convince others that this works? You can't. You can't convince them. You can say things, well, why not put it in the gallery for a couple of days, see how it goes, see what other people think of it. Um, gallery and the gallery people are a little bit more, um, they, 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 one of their main things they, they come out with is, well, it's very good, but it doesn't fit in. You know, and then you say, well, what sort of stuff do you want then? Oh, we want something completely different. And you think, but it is different. Mine's different because it doesn't fit in. So you, you have got this uh, fight, if you like, all the time, but fight with respect. You can't badger or push or whatever. You can sort of gently persuade to a degree. But most of the people that I know now over the years, they'll say, yeah, let's dig it in, let's see what happens. Uh, and nine times out of 10, they'll sell it and come back and, and want more. But, I, but I've been doing this a long time now. So, you know, I've got these people that support me now as well as I support them. So if you get a good gallery, you know, you do tend to go back to them all the time. Uh, if you've got, if you're a member of an art society, you tend to stick with that all the time. If you with a, an, if you manage to get into one of these art societies, they have their own exhibitions uh, in various parts of England, and you can put work in it and and whatever. And you only need two or three exhibitions a year, really, for enough. Because if you're putting ten paintings in each, and you've got you know, you're talking about say two a month painting. You know, that's that's, that's quite, it's, it's, it's quite a lot. You know, two three a month really. Uh, be, even though the paintings probably only take three days to do, um, you still even when you've done it, you're looking at it and then you go back to it maybe a little bit and touch it up and do that, and then you send it out. So so I I am even to this day I'm still pushing finding new ways, finding publicity. You know, I, um, I, I, during the, the, the COVID, I did a, um, just something to do really. My, my brother, uh, my younger brother, who was uh, quite supportive, he said, why didn't you come up with some ideas to put on t-shirts uh, to help the NHS? So I did these things and I also did this large painting and it was um, uh, a painting, uh, I, I don't think, Michelangelo's, the creation of um, Adam. And it was a parody. And it was really was the, the national health, if you like, which was, mm -hmm. you know, part of the painting, touching, which was Adam, which was a patient. And it was quite a big painting. And now this painting is, is, has been accepted in going into the, the Royal um, um, NHS Hospital in Bournemouth, where I live. You know, it's a thank you. So I'm giving it. But out of that, I'll get quite a lot of publicity. There'll be, it's going on the telly. There'll be in the, uh, it will be on the radio and, uh, and um, yeah, uh, and it'll be in the local newspapers and, and, and all that all helps getting your name out. So all the time, I'm always thinking of something new, even if it's for free, just to push. Does that what, make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. What, uh, what about the opportunities? Well, all this, there is as many opportunities out there as you want to take. They're there. You've only got to go onto Facebook. Uh, you've only got to look online and put in opportunities for artists. You don't have to go out nowadays and look. And they will tell you what artists, uh, sorry, what societies are doing what and where and when and where you can put your work. There's galleries saying, um, we're having an exhibition coming up um, in these particular months on the theme of the four seasons. You know, paint a picture on the Four Seasons, send it up, we'll put it in and see if it, it will sell. So you do the paintings, you send it up, hopefully it will sell. So th there are loads and loads of opportunities. If you do your homework, keep looking, keep pushing. And that is the day I take off when I do the pushing and I do the looking. I mean, I've just entered some stuff in like the Marine Society down here. There's some stuff in uh, Birmingham, um, their society. So you put stuff in there and... Uh, and that some of them are open um, exhibitions where you don't have to pay and there's ones there that only want £10 a painting 
you know um and it's and it's all fun and if you do get in the opportunities are great because you, you you're meeting might line might uh, uh, same like people who are in the you know the, the same game as you and it's great to talk to some of these people and how they work what they do and how they how they do it how they frame it whatever you know and, the, and everybody's keen to talk especially in art they're keen to tell you there's no secrets they want to tell you there's you know they, they there's no secrets there's there's uh, no cheating you know you, you can do what you like you can square up the the painting if you want to square it up you can try i don't but people trace and do one no cheating just get the work done get it the way you want and get it out there so there's no no reason why anybody should be thinking there aren't any opportunities out there there are and it's in abundance just take advantage fantastic what about competitions well, as I was saying with competitions, it's, um, you know, people moan about it. Competitions are there. Are they a good thing? Are they a bad thing? You've got to be careful again. Do your homework. Have a look. See what's out there. They're, they're, I don't know of any rogue uh, exhibitions where they take your money and don't do anything with the artwork. There was only one which they, they, they didn't show your work in a gallery. They only showed it online. And, and I would say to people... There are so many online galleries out there. Beware. Not many people, maybe I shouldn't say this, I don't know, but not many people buy on, from online galleries. Um, I've got some work on the uh, Saatchi Saatchi page, and uh, there are thousands, tens of thousands of artists on it. And sometimes I think, um, I haven't been on it a while, I'll have a look, and I can't even find myself on these websites, let alone uh, something else. So with competitions, be a little bit careful what you're doing. Try and find something that fits in with the work uh, that you're producing. Like if you're producing, you like boats, you like painting the sea, then you look something marine, maritime, that sort of thing, you know? And there's plenty of them. So, um, so uh, and, and you, and you're never really, when you say competition, you, you're not in competition with other artists because you, you can't be, because all work is, 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 all, is all different. You know, it's not, um, there, there's no coming first and second or whatever. You know, if you, if you think of it as like a um, uh, 100 meter race and you've got 10 people running that race, on your marks, get set, go, they all run. The person that goes uh, through the ribbon first is the winner, and the one that's second is second, the one that's third is third. But in art, you can all pass the tape, but the person is third may win because the judges like the way he ran. Or the person that came last, he comes second because his t shirt matched his trainers. Now, when you've got that to compete with, you can't compete because you haven't got a clue what these judges are gonna do. But never, I but never let it put you off. If you don't get in and you feel it's something you still wanna do, still put it in, and I still do. We all get rejections, I'm used to rejections, I've had it all my life. Um, and, um, and you'll build up a resilience from it. And you might feel down, you know, uh, you know if you work very hard on a painting, you put it into an exhibition and it's been refused, uh, and it can be refused on so many levels as well. You know, it can be accepted, but then not hung. And that's even worse, you know. Um, but in, instead of, you, know, you might be down for a couple of seconds and then you take a deep breath and you, and you, and I think you say, right, next time I'm going to do something better. And then you go away full of confidence again to do something better. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But yeah. even if the next painting you do might not be so good, but it still might get in. Yeah, sure. So let's go to the young people. What do you say to them? To young people? Yeah. I say to them, you know, um, again, work every day. It's very important to do something every day bar one. That bar one day, push your work. And what I mean push it, I mean have, a, have some sort of plan how you're going to show your work. You don't need a body of work. One work will do. Get out there, get some criticism from that work. Not necessarily show it to your friends because they're all going to say, well, that's very nice, it's lovely. But you want somebody who's going to be a little bit more, it's a bit taking it into a gallery. Take one painting in, say, excuse me, have you got five minutes? 
if they say no and they say well, what's a good time to come back be pushy whatever when when you see that guy and they're pretty straightforward these gallery owners so you say here's my piece of work that i've done what do you think they might say oh, it's great yeah we can sell something like that or they say no and, and if they say no have a look around see what they do go away paint something you think will then go back keep going back keep going back so uh so so i say with young people um paint every day or draw every day take one day off to, to keep pushing never be dismayed and, and if they think competitions is down to them if they think they're being taken for a ride they're just taking their money and whatever don't think that way because if you can get in the opportunities are are there and they and they're sort of really good for you you know so so don't deviate from that try try that all the time um and then keep keep again keep pushing keep painting keep showing keep pushing keep painting keep showing um uh, and come up if you can come up with good art who knows what this good art is but something that people like you're there try and get try and if you can get some criticism for your work again that is really i think really important yeah definitely definitely important and that boosts you on and 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 if you do fail like in every business it doesn't matter you can be a plumber and it doesn't go well you feel down i'm gonna pack it in you know but you don't you say right well i'm gonna try better i'm gonna try hard i'm gonna try more i'm gonna try something different i'm gonna try another way uh, and maybe it, and if you want to do it and i think art is a a funny business you, you you you've also you know with 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 art you've it's you've got to learn or if you haven't got art, to work on your own you are hours and hours and hours a day on your own you've got to like working on your own um you know put a bit of music on or something or, or whatever um but you are basically on so you, you and then it's feast or famine you know you sell a pain whoa let's go and get a bottle of champagne and uh you know let's get some food in we i can eat for a week and then you don't want to sell anything for three months so you're starving you've got no money you're struggling to pay your rent etc so, so you you've got to try and be that sort of person where you know if if things aren't going your way you've still got to find a way inside to build yourself up to keep on to keep on doing it you know and that's where a lot of young people i think sort of fail um where they say oh i don't know what to do you know i'm going to college and they will and by the time i finish i'm gonna have a fifteen thousand pound loan i've got to pay back and i'm thinking you only need to pay your fifteen thousand pound loan back if you're making money and if you're making money as an artist you're doing bloody well so pay it back you know go for the you know no, i don't know if anybody that's put in prison for not paying their uh, their 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 education loan back so i would say take it if that's what you want to take the loan go for it and then if you are doing well who cares if you have to pay it back it'd be great to pay it back but if you don't okay it might be a long slug you might never pay it back you might take 40 years to pay it back but don't let anything sort of stop you and it is a vocation it's not a it, it, it's not a paid salary job it's not it's not even a pension job you don't get a pension at the end of it um you know you, it's it's long it's lonely but it's fantastic once you do a painting and you the, the hairs on your back of your neck stick up and you've done something wrong that's worked out to be well you know one of these happy accidents that you do and you think this is this is good i like this and even if it's not good you'll be surprised by turning the painting away and i say this to all young people if you've done a painting turn it away for a week bring it out again have another look at it and you'll be surprised how much you like it don't throw anything away if you can help it say that i do but try not to throw anything away and then you can look back at it you know stick it in a plan's chest a box cardboard box stick it in the ship so um so you can bring it out a year later and you'll be surprised you think well it wasn't quite as bad and the other thing i would try to find somewhere to work as well you know as i said before whether it's a bedroom or or uh, a dining room or something find somewhere if you can find somewhere to work where you don't unless you're a very tidy person which i'm not and one of the things i hate at the end of the day is tidying up i i like the idea of walking out on my way out, i've got a sink in my studio i wash my brushes and i walk out and that's it whatever's on the floor is there in the morning you know and then uh, all of a sudden if uh, 
the wife's going out and she wants the dog in there. I've got to tidy up because, because this place isn't fit for my dog, apparently, because the floor is a bit dirty. But keep trying, keep going. And it is a vocation. And, and I do think at the end of the day, there is room for all artists. Every single artist there is a place for. It's, it's just a case of believing in yourself. Again, being distinctive as you can, having some sort of plan, and the third of the three, good art. Okay, let's come to the present. What have you been thinking about lately? What are your plans? Uh, well, after the Sky Portrait, which is only just finished, uh, because I didn't get through, uh, but I got my painting selected by, the, um, by my sitter, I'm thinking I'm gonna do it again. You know, why not? I'll have another go. I enjoyed it so much. It's got to be easier the second time, I hope. Uh, it's difficult to get in again, of course. It's difficult to get in as it was the first time, but it's not going to stop me. And I think, well, I'm going to be, uh, uh, do something different. I'm going to do a different way of painting, different style of painting, because that way I've done, I've done it. So instead of it, I did a portrait, which I did landscape. Uh, and now I'm going to do a portrait portrait instead of being landscape, if you, so I'm, I'm changing it. Um, I'm, and, and what I did with this one, I did a, I started it off in acrylics because it dries quicker. Uh, and then I brought some bits out in oil. And that actually worked quite well. So I'm thinking, well, instead of just bringing bits out in oil to try and change it, maybe do chunks of it. You know, I was telling you about like a television screens and people in the background and things happening. Maybe I could do a square, just a space. So it's a painting within a painting on a painting. Um, of that person and and if you can like the last person I did I was uh, I was asking the person questions where do they come from what do they do whatever and this person came from Stirling which is a place in Scotland and you know and whatever and uh, and with the film with um, um, Mel Gibson in you know freedom and all that I asked her mm -hmm. and she said oh yeah in Scotland we all need a little bit of freedom whoa that goes in my painting so I've got words in my painting there you know, and, and, and so that gives the pain something a bit different. So I, that's the sort of thing I'll be doing again. And, and now um, I want, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, I'm planning ahead. Uh, it's the Royal Portrait Society coming up. The BP is a kind of big thing over here, BP Portrait Awards. So I've got the canvas in the corner now. Uh, I've got my sitter. I know what I'm doing. Um, nearly know what I'm doing. There's still a few bits I want to put in. I will probably do a small, a4 watercolour sketch of the guy when he comes in. Um, uh, Trevor, his name is, got a big beard and whatever. So he's coming in, do a quick sketch of the guy. You don't, but with photography and stuff, you don't need your sitter to sit there all the time. You just need something to begin, maybe to the end. You know, if you're taking a, a week to do the painting, the, the poor guy doesn't need to sit there in front of you for 10 hours a day for, you know, five days. It's not fair. You know, even the Queen will only sit for, um, uh, I think it's, is it three hours for a painting? But you know, the, the, but if you want to paint her clothes, she will give you the clothes and you can put them on a model or a mannequin or something and paint or whatever. Um, so, so I'm thinking of, you know, the, my next thing. And, and, and I, my work is, is more sort of museum type work rather than decorative work. So, I, you know, I like proper portraits that look like the people. Uh, even though I do do decorative, it's not decorative, that's probably the, the wrong word. You know, more, um, you know, like equestrian with horses and stuff like that, which is more piss, um, picturesque type pictures. I still like to do museum type, even though they're harder to sell. That's the sort of work. So, so, so now I'm thinking of the BP Portrait Awards. I've got the, um, uh, I'm a, uh, going in for the, the, the Royal Institute of Painters in watercolour, which I love watercolour. Uh, very much. It's, even, it's one of the hardest sub paints I've ever known that you can work with because it, it's very unforgiving even though people say oh it's very easy to do watercolor. I find it very very di difficult I must admit uh, because it is unforgiving. You do an oil if the bit you don't like you scrape it off. You do an acrylic you just paint over the top of it paint you know uh, and then repaint it again. You can't do that with watercolor. The first hit to me is the last otherwise it, it starts getting messy and muddy so all the time I'm thinking ahead, so I've got the BP, I've got the watercolours, I've got the um, Royal Institute of Painters and Watercolour, I've got the Marine Society, and I'm even putting some stuff in Wales, in their national, uh, the Gallery Museum, and their stuff is wanted by the end of February. So from now until this time next year, I've got enough work on.
So I'm very happy. Yeah, awesome. What else would you like to say? What would I like to say? Um, I think I've just about said it all, really, I think. Um, except, you know, it, if you do get into this and it does work for you, it's, I think, it's possibly one of the most rewarding jobs that you, if, once you get it right, you get a painting right, you can't really describe it, really. It's, um, it's, it's, it's not like an electrician, you could put a point to, you know, something in and it looks good or whatever. It, it's, this is something, you've created something which is might not be the most unique but it is unique because this is the only painting that has ever been done even though it might be in the same sort of image or style of somebody else or whatever but if you've done something and you and you and you look at it and you think wow you know all those years of throwing paintings away all those years of trying making making mistakes being refused that one painting that just like one instance of time can can make everything everything amazing and i go for amazing if i can get amazing i'm happy might happen once a year if you're lucky really lucky once a year it has been more than amazing talking to you danny today uh oh, thank, thank you so you. much indeed for your time and help thank you very much but lovely talking to you, you thank you, you take care thank, thank you. you very much